Welcome back to the Headbangers podcast where you host Nathan and Brad. Uh, today, Nathan, do you want to kick us off with what this episode's about? We're trying something a little different. Yeah, I thought we'd have like a bit of a nostalgia episode. So I thought, yeah. let's go back and listen to some of the old bands that we proper loved when we first got into like metal and, and all the other, you know, all our favorite genres out there um, and see what we thought about them now. You know, do they hold up? Do we like what they're still doing as well? Like, I just think it'd be, it'd be interesting. A nice little trip down memory lane as well. I might offer, you know, like some interesting stories or, you know, how we got into them um, and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think obviously we probably speak for a lot of people where, you know, some of these bands, you might say that you dislike them now. Um, maybe, you know, you've gone through a bit of a, a roundabout with them perhaps, but, you know, there was a some point in time that I believe that everybody in the metal community or hardcore community listened to this stuff. And, you know, that was their gateway. So I think it's going to be an interesting one to um, go back and see what we think and just share a bit of a nostalgia trip. So kick us off, Nathan. What's what's the first one that's uh, popped up in your head? So I, I've been kind of doing, just doing my own like little favourites and like the bands that I feel like might be universal. There's some that are unique to me, but um, Slipknot for one. You know, that's like, not really unique to me. Like I think it's a lot of people's gateway band. I think, like, I've spoken to a lot of people. A lot of people have gotten into metal with this band. Um, now, does it, do, do they hold up? Well, yes. I, I think, like, if you listen to Iowa, it still holds up to this day. It's still pretty heavy. Um, yeah. And I just I just still really like the, the, the album. I like all their old stuff. One interesting thing is like, how I got into them was, I remember when I was in high school, just one of my friends got into metal way before me. We used to argue actually all the time because at the time I was into like dubstep and shit like that. So I was like, I, I want on the bandwagon with it. And like, I remember we once had an argument about Black Veiled Brides because he's like, you haven't even listened to them. I'm telling you they're good. In hindsight, I think I might have been right on that. I might have been right on like it. I didn't really like it. Didn't I didn't think it was good. And no, no shit shared throne because they all are really good musicians, you know. But at the time, I just I just didn't didn't get it. I didn't like it. Um, I still go. That's not still not really my cup of tea. But we were arguing for like forty five minutes straight. And like, fine. You know what? I'm gonna give you a list of bands, and I reckon you'll like them. And then you're the one that's basically eating your words. I was like, fucking go on then. And I put on Slipknot. I was like. Yeah. So I actually, I actually like this. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, I was like, this is all right, yeah. actually. So that was like the sort of gateway for me. That's how I got into Slipknot. Um, I do think, like, in terms of like the stuff they're doing now, obviously they released a new track recently. And I want to get your opinion on it, Brad, to be fair, because I feel like we, we don't really talk about like ongoing new things anymore, really, on a podcast. So what, yeah, what did you think to the new track? Well, I want to I circle around quickly to, to how I got into Slipknot as well. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll definitely head back to that because I've got some thoughts on it. Um, so yeah, I, I've, I've known about Slipknot for a long time. Like, you know, my cousin used to be into like, you know, metal and emo stuff and everything like that before I even knew anything about it. But she used to have like purse on the wall. She had like a Slipknot purse there. And I was like, I used to be fucking scared of it. I was like, what the fuck are these guys with masks on? Like, it was crazy as shit. Um, but obviously, like everybody knows Slipknot. If you ever ask anyone that goes up to you and they say, Oh, you like metal, do you not so like Slipknot? Then it's like, I don't know why it's the one thing that everybody, you know, knows, I think it is. I think it was gone. because they were the poster boys in the 90s, they were the really. poster boys, yeah. Like, they were the ones that were like really, they were, you know, like everyone would talk about them. Like, I think they even made news a couple of times and, and stuff like that. So, I think yeah. for a lot of people, they, they were doing were some like, crazy stuff as well, yeah. I feel like, in terms of like the movement of like new metal i don't think you can bulk them into that as well i just don't, i don't think they're a new metal band like you listen to any any other new metal band they're yeah. not really they don't really stand they in that sort of, sort of thing but i think like they were the poster boys of like this really like aggressive style what they were doing you know so yeah. i think that was that's the reason why a lot of people go oh like slipknot do you know what i mean like yeah absolutely um so for me at least i think i was in like year 10 at the time so probably about 15 um I don't, obviously i was getting into like metallica and shit like that at this time and like i was sort of like getting my way into metal from like bands that i heard when i was in like year six um you know i used to really like disturbed and metallica like they were, they were the two that 
you know, got me into it. I was into like Guitar Hero, so that introduced me to a lot of bands. Um, and then I started to, I, I just saw like the Antennas to Hell, which was like their compilation in 2012. And I just decided to pick it up and give them a shot. And then obviously I had a lot of bangers on there. Um, I got into them through that, you know, had before I forget on there, it had sick. Um, so yeah, I thought it was good. And I, I started to realize that they, they weren't as heavy as I thought they were. At the time, obviously I was like, yeah, it's really heavy, but they also had the melody. Um, so I think if you're, if you, you know, looking for a gateway band, I suppose Slipknot were always that one that was great because, you know, they made you feel like you were listening to something quite extreme and you got the kick out of it. But at the same time, you could sing along and it was sort of a nice sort of ease into what was considered quite extreme. Like mm. it's a way, it's kind of what, what uh, Finn on Punk Rock NBA said, you know, there was sort of like the gateway extreme metal band. They were like the most mainstream extreme metal band that you can get. I know they, that they had like Blast like Beats. Maybe BC and, and shit, you know. You know? Like, I, I, there weren't a lot of bands at the time doing that shit. Like you, you listen to, I think I, I think Finn from Punk Rock NBA had a, an it NBA had a, a really really good point on them that they won yeah. they weren't new metal they were just like almost death metal meets like the stone sour sour like rock and like yeah. I thought that was like a perfect explanation of what they were because they, I, I yeah. don't think they've ever been like new metal really like they I, had some influence in the nineties I suppose with the first album but it's never been like completely the case. But uh, yeah, I, I completely agree. I think I think they were the extreme metal band that could get so many people into it. And no matter what, I think people would always lead on something heavier because of Slipknot. So I think that is the reason why I, I think they hold up because still now kids are getting into Slipknot. They're wearing the shirts, they're wearing the hoodies um, and then venturing off into all different sort of platforms and inf still influencing bands now like Slot to Prevail. Obviously massive Slipknot fans. Um, and you can hear that through their last album, Costellum. But to answer your question about um, what do I think of the new song, um, I don't know. Um, I don't think it's a bad song, but I feel like it's sort of leaning more towards Stern Sour, and it sounds like a Stern yeah, Sour trying to cover Slipknot, and I'm not too big fan of that. Like, I, do you know what? I feel like they... I feel like it was a bit disappointing, mainly because, again... I kind of bought in to like them being like, this is going to be as heavy as Iowa. I wish they just stopped saying that before they release them. Do you know what I mean? Like, I well, they think... said this one's going to be like volume three. Yeah. Like, I just think like, no, I know, but even volume three were pretty, pretty heavy. But it's like, I feel like they just, if they just stopped saying that, they'd yeah, be a lot less mean. like, I hate when fans, fans say that. It's going to be the heaviest I mean? one. Yeah. It's like, stop the stop. Stop giving me these false expectations of what it's going to be. Just let me just enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. Like, just, I, I, I would, I respect bands that be like, no, it's not like any of the other albums. We did that ages ago. Get over it. We're, we're doing different shit now. Like, we're not, we're not doing that type of stuff anymore. We're too old, to be honest, to be doing that shit anymore. And you're just going to have to like it. If you don't, Eh, do you know what I mean like yeah, it's not so for well. you then? Like, but nah, I feel like everyone, every band that's like in like this sort of age now, where you know a lot of them like in the forties and and fifties and that, and they've been going around for a while. I find a lot of them kind of guilty of being like, yeah, it's gonna be like insert old album from the nineties that we all like, and everyone's like, yeah, and then they release it, it's nothing like that. It's, it's not like, to say that even the song's say, bad. But yeah. like you, you've you've made out like it's going to be exactly like it, and so then when you listen to it, you've already set the bar way too high, so it's never going to meet the expectations. It's like you know when you speak to a mate or something, and they're like, "Oh, this is the best movie ever," and you watch it, you're like, "Well, if it's not the best movie ever now, then I'm going to be disappointed either way." Yeah, like I feel like like <laughs> not to talk about for, uh, deviation here. We're going to talk about movies for a while, but like it's like Fall of a Thunder. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like everyone like this is gonna be gonna be the like best Ragnarok. Marvel film ever made, and then you go to see it and you're like, eh. yeah. I mean, we better cut. Was... We better cut away from this. Yeah, I, feel like I will talk for hours about why that film's bad. Well, Brad, this is a thrown together episode, so we can do that if you'd like. <laughs> but no, I was just like, it was kind of meh, isn't it? And it's like I've been like watching mm. reviews on it, and it's like I think everyone's saying the same thing where they're like. I don't think I like it that much. <laughs> yeah, not not a fucking tall. But like I feel like when you over 
overhype something, yeah. or even if you say it's you know play, even if you play on the nostalgia, it's like oh, it's just as good and just as heavy as this as this album that you all liked and you remember from your childhood. You're gonna you're gonna play on those nostalgia strings. We go out. Yeah, it it's never going to be like that. It's not. It's not. Like, it's not going to live up to that. So if you just didn't say anything, I think that's better because it's like at least then, like if they hadn't said that, I feel like I would have gone into this track that that track that they released, and probably being like come back going, oh, you know, that was pretty solid. Yeah, you know I mean, like, but like because they said that, it kind of built this idea in me. I went, oh my god, it's going to be fucking heavy as all hell. I'm going to be like, oh my God, fucking Slipknot are back to the old style. Oh yeah. No, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. It was, you know, like kind of what yeah. they've been doing for the last couple of years anyway. Like, Abs- it's like, eh. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, overall, I think, I think Slipknot does hold up. Um, you know, they're still great live. And the, you still know, great live. The music All still, those albums yeah. still hold up. Um, they do. And you know, I thing is, I like. Respects I, the influence, to be honest. Yeah. I, I like Nero Forte, that, that album that they put yeah, out. Um, just, that, really I think that's a solid album. I think they still put out solid stuff. Like Even though we've just been shitting on the new track for like five minutes now, but yeah. we do we still do like think they put out yeah. new stuff. Like we, we the Good, really solid shit. So, you Let's know, they're still Machine Head. Oh, you want to talk Machine Head? I want to talk Machine Head because I think it's been such an interesting ride with Machine Head. Um, so, I'll talk about how I got into Machine Head. So, I was, I think I was just breaking into college at this point. Um, at the moment, like, just imagine me, little fresh kid. You know, I, I liked my Testament, I liked my Exodus, I liked my Metallica. I was sort of like branching off into like, you know, after the big four, checking out what the big eight is and all that kind of shit. Um, I was like massive into it at the time. Um, but I didn't, I never liked death metal or anything like that. Um, I still thought that was way too much for me. And um, so um, my girlfriend at the time, like she, she said, you need to check out this fucking band called Machine Head. Um, I kind of had an idea of who they were because I went to download 2012 and there was they played it. Um, but I never sat down and listened to their music. So she gave me the Unto the Locust CD. Um, and then like as soon as like I Am Hell came on, I'm like, fucking hell, this is like so much going on. Like, and starts off with like, and I call this my first love and introduction into breakdowns because Machine Head, I still think, has some sick ass fucking breakdowns. But they had the melody as well. You know, they had a bit of clean singing, but his voice was always a bit more raspy than, say, the average bands around them. Um, but also, you know, some orchestral parts. Um, so there's like a lot to take in at that time and a lot of things that would influence what I'd like in the future. Um, but, you know, the whole album to me, it had like this sense of every track being unique in its own way. Some very nice guitar playing, um, some amazing solos. Um, so yeah, I fucking loved it. You know, the Ballad of like Darkness Within. And I just checked out all the machine from there, like the blackening. Um, so yeah, I fucking, I loved them at the time. I thought they were amazing. I saw them like two years later when they played Leeds. Um, I'd definitely say, yeah, first love into Breakdowns. And I, I feel mm. like that was the band that was the gateway into death metal in a weird way, even though they weren't death metal because they were always a tad bit, they were like the heaviest band of their genre. If you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, I completely get where you're coming from there. Because you're like, oh, yeah. what? now that I have a t- I've had a taste of this, I wonder what else is out there. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and yeah, literally. It was like, you know, gateway, for sure. Well, but I think for me with Machine Head, you know, here's a funny fact, right? I didn't know who the fuck Machine Head was until I first started going to Key Club with you guys. Because you, you heard the video for the first time. No, it was Locust. Whenever they, I remember, in the, remember back in the old, back in my day, they, they used to play Locust in the fucking metal room, and usually so go crazy over it, including Dylan. I mean, let's face it, takes a couple of songs that he's familiar with, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> exactly what you mean. Ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's like Dylan. You he's could, still like that now. I'm tempted to just get give him my AirPods for the night and just watch him, but just yeah, loving life like, and go wild. Um, but yeah, <laughs> sorry, Dylan. <laughs> but like, I, would. I, I, just, I never knew who the fuck they were, and like, I felt like I could fucking pose for it, even asking any of you guys, going, Who that song was you've been singing? Who's it by? And what's it? Is that called? Metallica. 
<laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, I just, I just, I was like, ah, oh, no, nah, fuck it. And then, like, I remember I came around to Caelan's one night, and Caelan playing it, and I was there, like, oh, who's, who's, who's this? He's like, oh, it's Machine Head. I'm like, got it. <laughs> like, yeah. So there you go. finally, yeah. So I, I, I got into them and listened to like Burn My Eyes and and all that, like. Yeah, and and the album, the you know, Locus. Am I am I, am I saying the name right? I think it's I'm sure the remember Locus, it. the album. Yeah, I'm sure. I remember, might be Locus. Re- remembering album names, but yeah, no, I got into, I got, I listened to the album, and like, I was like, yeah, this is this is really good, and like, I feel like I went on. I think you know what like, what you're gonna kind of go into as well because we did speak about it like a little bit before the episode, like mm. a slippery sort where he's like, I don't don't like him anymore. Now I like him. I don't like him anymore. I I did that and like. I, I don't, I, I'm not into them now just because I just don't think what they've been doing recently can top, you know, like the past. Mm. I just think they, they've peaked and I still like their old stuff, but I just don't think that they, they're ever going to top it. Not to sound like a dick, I, you know, like it, it, it's just one of those things. It's my own personal taste. If you like, you know, what, what they're putting out still, that's completely yeah. fine. But for me, I, I don't know. I just, I just don't think it could ever top those original sort of albums for me. I think that's fair to say. Um, thing is with Machine Head, like they are an amazing band. Or like you know, they, they they released like albums that are so iconic that like most metalheads will know when they're going to get played. Like you know, where it's certain songs, but also like for a good period of their career, they were one of those bands that everyone had a favorite album by them. You know, some people really like the blackening. Some people like their like new metal phase when they did like burn my eyes. Um, you know, they had so many different styles. Um, obviously, there's Locus. You've got even um, fucking Bloodstone and Diamonds, which is still one of my favorite ones by them. You know, when they they try to take all this melody and all mm-hmm. this epicness and make it into like this grand masterpiece. Um, so they made some really good shit, and then it, it just fell off the wagon after that. Like they just. Uh, mm. you know half the band left um i feel like rob was just doing what he wanted to do i remember like us when we first started the podcast listens like that do or die song i'm just like what are you doing man but however recently they have been making they've been cooking up a tiny bit of a storm again because they've they've got i think they've got like members of decapitated and um he's built like an entirely new band and it's starting to sound a bit more heavier now and it's starting to go back to the roots of what machine head was you know when it is it missed that kick, that machine head kick. And I feel like they're slightly getting it back. And I won't know until they've released that new album that's coming soon. And then I can fully say whether I can call myself a fan again. But like you said, I do like their older stuff. And I think that is, it'll always have its impact and influence on every metal band at the time that will listen to them. Yeah. And I think also this is a good time to like talk about how much of a complete cock I was when we first started the podcast. Because... You know, original viewers might remember I went on like a good ten minute like rant about how I disliked Rob Flynn. Now, is this your apology? A couple like years older, I sound like a complete fucking prick. To be honest, I can't yeah. watch that episode, but just because I I feel like a complete bell end. I'm like, I have asked Brad many times if we can delete that episode, but he, you know, it's going up, it's staying up there. But I, I, sorry, Rob. Yeah, Rob, if you're ever watching this, I don't know why you would be, but you know, if we ever get you on, just uh, just don't watch episode two. Um, yeah, Nathan was quite high as well, so I was not. <laughs> I wasn't high. You were. You were fucking baked, man. Wait, yeah, that was the episode before download. Yeah, yeah, nah. We can blame um, it on the uh, blame it on the stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I apologize to any and and I think like I'm a massive cock now looking at that episode back. So you know. Opinion, you know, not well, not even opinions. Yeah. Just people grow up. <laughs> yeah. like... We were passionate. We were passionate about Machina. We were just sorry to see, like, you know, one of our favorite bands just to take a turn like that. But like I said, they are they are getting better again. I think now. Um, I'm interested to see what they're going to do. Um, I think in a way they hold up, but they don't. It's just very interesting. But also, like saying they hold up because it's almost like a new era of Machina because it is a completely different band. Even though Rob Flynn is Machina. He's the one that's carried it all the way through. Mm. But, you know, it's going to be a new a new sort of era. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Time. I'm excited. I'll check out the uh, newer stuff as well that you mentioned um, after this. But yeah, now a band that I kind of want to talk about is because when I was thinking of a nostalgic band, 
and I, I don't think this was one for is one for everyone. Gee, I can't stop burping. This happened last time, um, yeah. but <laughs> I don't think I'm. Die, you know, this, I know. I don't know. I don't <laughs> think this is one for everyone, but it was for me because I think it was one of the first experiences I had with metal without really knowing it. Like, well, I knew it was metal, but I had a friend. Yeah, well, this band's Aelstorm. Um, and I remember in high school, I had a friend who was called Matthew. Um, and he was this really cartoony, like, sort of character. And, like, he, he was like, Oh, mate, have you ever listened to Pirate Metal? I was there, like, No. And, like, I remember we played it and he was doing, like, a Jack Sparrow run to it and, and shit like that. Like, and we're talking, like, this is in high school, like, 15 at this point. It was before I got properly introduced to it. To metal and I was like, oh, this is this is good. And like I would listen to it secretly um all the time. And I used to really, really like Aerostorm um back in the day when I was younger. I I, I don't want to I, I keep you you I don't want to be negative. <laughs> I, I keep trying to avoid that because I feel like in the past I have been a complete bell end of being negative. And Brad knows that I can be <laughs> a knobhead because he'll send me a track. I'm like, meh, it's okay. And like so I don't like him anymore. And I think it's because, and no shade thrown on anyone that still likes him and still listens to him at all. But I just think I'm a bit too old to listen to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's cool when I'm like 14. I'm actually going to throw is... you a burn here because I think I know what you're trying to get at. Yeah. Like, I, th- I think what you like, and I think, not films, obviously. I know that's a completely different story. But like with music, I think you like things that are a bit more realistic, like, you know, lyrics about real situations, like, you know, not all the fantasy stuff, you know, sort of like serious stuff. Like, you know, you, you're not really a big fan of like Steel Pan for Ale Storm or like, you know, Power Metal, because I think it's just like too, you know, over the top, like, you know, about yeah. dragons and wizards and pirates. Like, it's just not really your yeah, thing. It just, obviously, it if it's movies, I'm me. sure you're pretty happy to, you know, fucking listen to Star Wars and shit. But if it was like a Star Wars themed band, I don't think that you'd be fully down. Yeah, no, fuck that. No, I, I just feel like it's, it's corny though. in a way. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, I'm not dissing every power metal band ever. You know, you guys do you. You know, if you really enjoy the music you make and there's people that really enjoy the music you make, then that, you know, that's great. I just feel like, it was cool. It like Aelstorm was cool when I was 15. And like, I could, you know, have a bit more escapism. And, but now, as a 24 year old man with bills to pay <laughs> and a job, I feel like I haven't got time for escapism at the moment. And it's like, I just feel ridiculous in a way listening to Paramount thinking, hmm, gas bills tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, like we are just here up. to drink your beer. And you're like, oh, yeah, I could do, do a beer, actually, yeah. Okay, now just 300 yeah. quid down, like, from paying gas bill. So yeah, it's just like, it's just, I don't know. I feel like I did, I enjoyed it when I was young, but now it just kind of feels corny. And as to what they're releasing now, it's just kind of the same. Like, it's not, hmm. it's nothing, nothing you haven't really heard. You know, there's not, yeah. there's, the, it's, it's just like, very meh for me it's like i, I can understand why people like it but it's like eh. so i think for me like um i've liked Aelstorm for quite a long time as well you know i'm going talking like you know early college time which kind of the same sort of situation someone's like oh yeah pirate metal i think so it all starts in it really so i was like not really no but someone showed me it. i was like obviously a massive fan of it i love like pirates and fantasy shit so you know i'm not the kind of guy that was you know you know dress up as a pirate and stuff like that but I, I did i do i do like the idea of escapism i mean even like movies i love i love fantasy stuff um it's never gone too far but like i suppose with music as well i do like to sort of sit down and listen to something where it takes me away to like another world especially like you know i guess what you said about oh gas bills tomorrow like at that point i would want to listen to something that's like that so i was like fucking hell just give me 30 minutes of a break where i could pretend to be a pirate for a moment and not think about the fucking rent going out and energy bills increasing so yeah i guess i guess that's my sort of reasoning which is why i don't mind power metal 
Um, again, I don't really listen to too much of it. Like it is more of the sort of real side of situations. I think as I've gotten older, I have appreciated more lyrics that are about real life situations because I can listen to it and it speaks to me. I'm like, oh shit, they, you know, they're going through the same shit that I went through. Um, but I do like to switch off and sometimes just like turn my brain off, listen to that stuff. And when I see it live as well, you know, everyone's sort of like, you know, a bit merry, having a good time, doing stupid. I will admit, crowds. power metal yeah. is fun to listen to yeah. it live. Like when I saw Power Wolf Wolf at Bloodstock, I'm not going to lie, I was being the camp dickhead, being like, I'm not fucking seeing that. No, 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 it's not my thing. I don't like it. I'm going to stay at camp. And Brad White, well, we're all going. You'll be on your own. I'm like, okay, I'll come. And it was one of the best things I saw that entire fucking weekend. He had flamethrowers on his arms. I was like, this is amazing. You know what? I was like, I wouldn't listen to it on Spotify, but if they're at a festival, I'm fucking running down because that was fun. The bit, the yeah, key, was were. it the guy on the keyboard or the bassist? Whoever the fuck it was, was there was someone, someone running up and down. They had really good crowd work. I thought it was great, you know. And Solid when you, you know, when you tipsy yeah. as well, it just makes it way more fun. I had enjoyed that Stone Cold st- sober, but drunk, I was like, this is this is the best day of my life. So, yeah, I will agree. It is extremely fun to like watch whilst yeah. you're whilst you're at a festival. And, and live absolutely yeah i think that's where that sort of music comes into play as well you know when you when you see it live it's very much like ready for a performance ready to like sort of have a party and i think i've always liked that about ailstorm um where they stand now i mean i'm not going to talk about the controversy and that's like a separate fucking story uh enough everything's been said about it we're just talking purely about the music um yeah. as for this recent stuff um i feel like time by time I mean, they've made a joke about it before, that they are sort of scraping the barrel with stuff to write about. But it's just getting a bit sort of samey. And like, I mean, I, I don't mind the sort of like when they make songs about partying and it's, you know, a bit of a jerk. But in the recent album, it felt like, I don't know, it felt like they were just literally being lazy with the writing in a way. Like yeah. they, they weren't trying. And that was different from the previous album because I feel like they were still trying to make like, a you know, a listenable song that's catchy and fun, but this time it did just felt different. So I'm still a fan, but I think that they need to just try better on the next one. Yeah, I got that from the new album as well. Because like, you know, we run this. So even if I'm not into a band, we still look listen to anything we can find that's a new release. So I always keep, you know, like my radar on there and I always listen to new releases. And I listen to that album. Exactly what you know, like what you said. I thought, yeah, it's it's scraping here. Do I mean like I was like, eh. you know, I think there's only so much you can go with uh with that stuff. I just think they've they've hit the limit. Yeah. Can I go on a on a side story though? Because I just yeah. remembered something that might be funny to talk about. Go on. Um, and it does involve Aelstorm. So, okay. same friend who got me into Aelstorm, Matthew. Matthew, if you listen to this, I'm sorry for telling this story. But it, I think it'd just be funny. Um, <laughs> so we went to a costume party at Key Club, right? And it was pirate night. I'm pretty sure this was like the the night at the night I met you guys or something. No, that was that you it wasn't Key no, Club. No, no, that was different. Blades back it. Yeah, well, it was it was, oh yeah, it was Key Club. It was definitely yeah. Key Club. It must have been a different night. But yeah, it was like pirate theme night. Hmm. And I just kind of like half asked it. I, you know, I didn't even dress up. I don't think I was like, ah, fuck that. <laughs> I invited my friend Matthew because at the time, you know, we didn't really know you guys well or like that. So me and Caitlin were like, well, have a fancy going out. <laughs> well, you know, we'll ask Matthew, you know, he'll come along. He wants to go out. So Matthew's like, oh, I'll meet you at yours. I'm like, no worries. He's like, I'm at the bus stop. I'm like, oh, nice. So I get off. He's there. In a full pirate costume. <laughs> and I'm not joking, Brad. I, I mean, with the boots. We, I mean, it was a historically accurate fucking costume. I'll give, you, give him that. Like, the coat was a super thick costume. He had a fucking pirate hat. And I had to walk all the way to mine to get changed after work. <laughs> Which was a 20-minute <laughs> walk from the fucking bus stop, right? to mine with him dressed like a fucking pirate so i walked we get changed right 
Well, I, uh, was, I remember, I, I was, we were both all skinned. We were young as fuck when they, mm-hmm. you know. So I was like, we're getting a bus to Caleb's. So get, we get on the bus to Caleb. Again, he's still dressed like a fucking pirate. But <laughs> I got on the bus, I pay, I'm like sat waiting for him. And he like walks over, pretend, basically pretending to be Jack Sparrow. He's like, oh, can I come aboard your vessel, mate? And the bus driver, you can tell he's like, I'm, I oh, hate my job. I, I'm going to say, I, it wasn't I, I, too I, bad until you said that. Yeah, and it, now like, he's like, I fucking hate I'm, I'm there like, Matt, just pay. Just just fucking pay. So just be like, yeah, I'm going to a costume party. Right, you know, I, I, I just didn't have time to get changed. I'm going as a pirate. No, you know, I just address it. And then like, because, and he's there like, uh, it'd be like, he goes, it's like one twenty. This was a back in the day, so it was cheap. Like one twenty for a single. I've only got two shillings, mate. Sorry. Yeah, and this is why. That's what he says. He goes, <laughs> "Do you accept shillings, mate?" And um, bus driver's like, well, "No, British pounds, please." He's like, "Okay," God. so he pays. And then, on the bus, packed four people, he's playing ale stop. Oh, I hate that. Out loud. So I'm sat here, I'm sat here thinking, I'm going to get stabbed to some of, I'm sat here next to a pirate, listening to pirate metal. I'm like, oh, fuck's it. I love the guy to bits. He's one of being, being one of my oldest and dearest friends. But in that, I was sat there and I was thinking, I want the fucking world to swallow me. And when we finally got to Caleb, we walked in and we were doing the same spiel to Caleb. And Caleb looked, I remember Caleb looked at me and went, has he been dressed like a fucking pirate this whole time? And I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. I've walked through town. I've walked to the home. We've been on a bus. He was playing Ale Storm loud on his fucking speaker. Yes, he has been. And he's kept this up. And he did it the entire night out as well. And I was like, it's impressive. Again, Matthew, I love you. I'm not, I'm not. Say he, he just he just sat, sat about to have a shot of kale and some pre drinks is like to the black pearl. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's a funny story. I just think that it's a funny, funny story. Yeah. God. <laughs> okay. Right. So, side note. Go on. What's next? Go on. What's your what well, you I think you wanted to speak about Sister yeah. Down. Sorry, my fucking brain's brain's fried. Um, Mate, try living that. <laughs> um well I'll actually change it. I want to talk about one that is a reversed one that I used to dislike when I was younger and now I, I happen to like. So, um, well, actually, when I first said, so basically the band's Lincoln Park, um, obviously one of the biggest fucking bands about. Um, when I was like really young, I remember like playing Guitar Hero again and I liked, you know, what I've done. I thought it was a quite a good song. Um, but then I sort of like completely forgot about them. Obviously you heard like in the end and stuff probably on the radio. So you know about all that stuff. But I just like, I started to, when I was going through my thrash phase, I was a bit of elitist back in the day. So I was just like, I hated any band that sounded slightly whiny. So I'm just like, oh, I hate these fucking bombs, fucking, fucking causes. Emo pose yeah. shit is. So fucking cringy to think back on that. I was like that. Mm. But yeah, so I was basically like completely wrote them off. I didn't even give them a chance. Um, and then like fucking must have been like the start of uni. I'd started to like give give them a give them a chance. I think like they popped up on my YouTube recommended and they were like, there's a, a song off there. Not I think what's the fucking album now? It was like the, the one before the last one. Um and I quite liked it. Yeah, so you're I thought, this is the person here because I am the worst for remembering album. album know, I'm so bad. I'm so bad. bad. But yeah, I liked it. Um so I checked all the stuff out. I listened to Hybrid Theory, obviously, Meet Yora. I just thought I'd started to appreciate, like, you know, that these guys had such a unique sound for the time. They were that in their new metal bandwagon. But, like, so many people I spoke to that didn't like metal liked Linkin Park, you know, just because they had the rap influence. They had did that album with Jay-Z. Like, they were sort of the, the band that were a mixture of so many different genres um and then the new album came out which i slightly shouted at first and then like when chester died i'm just like i sort of understand where he was coming from and these songs are like probably some of the heaviest songs that they released just based on the lyrical content because when you listen to the interviews that i did after it talking about where his mental space was and how defensive he got when people disliked the album you know obviously he put his heart and soul into i think album. yeah it was very must have been very personal for him yeah, as a as a pop album, it was fucking it was amazing. You know, he did some collaborations with like Stormzy and shit. Like I thought that was 
incredible. It just been, again, still meshing the different genres. And Hybrid Fairy is still one of the best selling albums of all time. It doesn't always mean that a band's talented, but you know, they've got some recognition for a reason because they've managed to touch so many people. Um, so again, I think like Lincoln Park was one that I shot on for it is just on the basis that they were popular and that they, you know, I thought they were poses because I was into Fresh at the time and that was the only thing I liked. But very talented band. Obviously him, Chester, Mike Schneider, the rest of the band, like they've all got amazing talent. So yeah, I think Lincoln Park was a full roundabout for me. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of went through a similar thing where I didn't, I, I wasn't like, like a massive fan. And like, I think it was because like over repetition, if that makes yeah. any sense. Like, you know, I can tell you what, Keys is making a big appearance in, in, the, in this episode. But, you know, like, obviously the, me and you met through that place. We'd go there almost, well, every Friday. It's definitely got some younger. special sort of memory, but still, it has ruined a lot of fucking songs. Yeah, it was the same thing. They ruined Linkin Park for me. Like, I, you got to remember, when I started going out with you guys and, and stuff, I, I was like a baby still, kind of with this stuff. You know, like, I still wasn't into a lot of the stuff I'm into now and... And like, you know, I was in an early, like very early phase, um, you know, I, and I didn't really, I didn't really have much experience with Lincoln Park. And, you know, it was one of those things was like, oh yeah, they came on and I'd listen to them. I'm like, this is great. Yeah, this, this is good. But like many songs of Keys, after you hear it every Friday, you just like, oh. yeah. Yeah, I'm over it. So I, I like really, torture. yeah, and and I stupidly were like, no, I don't like Linkin Park. And it's like now that I don't really go out as much and and stuff like that. I have grown like a new appreciation for him. Like Siobhan will play you know like a couple of Linkin Park songs in the car all the time, and I fucking really like him. And like I have honestly changed my opinion. Like I do really, really like him now. And I, do, yeah. I, I think they deserved all the cre- credit they ever got because they were they were a solid band throughout. Yeah, had a step um, of the game every time as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, they were solid. Um, but yeah, for the, like, along the early days, I really just didn't really care for them, really. I yeah. was like, eh. I could, it was like, I can take it or leave it. Like, if you want to stick some on, stick some on. But you don't, I'm, I'm really not asked. Like, do you know I mean? Like, it wasn't like, I'm like, oh, dude, I really want to listen to Linkin Park. Yeah, I mean, like, go on, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You know, Key Club, you know, they, we've been met a lot of good friends going there. But I mean, even if you go to like any club in the world that plays metal music, it's always the same fucking playlist. And it's always like the same songs. It's like yeah, Budapest. It's like Budapest. Yeah, we went there. It was like the Budapest Keys. Like, I had a good time, obviously. I was abroad. I was having a great time. But um, yeah, like, like, this, the, this, this, this is the thing, right? So, you know, I wouldn't mind if they play different songs by these bands, but it's always the same three that will circle between between mm. everyone. I'm like, play something else. Like, obviously, anyone that goes there are probably going to be like fans of other songs on the albums. So just give it a shot and see how it goes down. Please. But you know <laughs> what? You know what? From like, I get that, like that nightclub in Budapest, right? I liked it the first night, but the second night we went, I didn't like it at all. Just because it's like, I've already done this. Like, it is still the same playlist. And they played like a couple of different songs, but it's like, eh. But I, I think like for me, I agree with you, like play some different songs. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's kind of like eh. it's like I, I I'm you know, I've listened to this stuff like I've listened I listen to it all the time. Like I've li- I, you know, when I was younger, I used to listen to it all the time. And I get it, it might be like, oh yeah, yeah, but you oh, know, people played uh, Malevolence last week. We played like five songs by Malevolence in the main room. I know Dylan texted me at two in the morning telling me they're like, they're playing fucking this. And I'm now like, <laughs> cool, Dylan, but I'm trying to sleep. Yeah, and I'm like, I... no, but like the thing is, I, it makes me a bit uncomfortable that Keys is playing it now. Like, no, because it's like, hey, you weren't there from the fucking beginning, all right? I've been like, ride or die with these fuckers. Since 2018. Yeah, that'd be a gatekeeper, that'd be a gatekeeper you know, on my life. I'm not gatekeeping them. I think it's great they're getting all that success, right? But tell you what really fucks me off. <laughs> so the other day I was at a gig and some guy who had just gotten into my life, right, 
was trying to tell me I didn't know shit all about him. I was there like, fucking, like, piss off, mate. I was there like, and he was there like, no, nah, mate, mate, you went, no, it went like, it was like, it, like, they started off like this. They've always been metal. I'm like, no, this blew up in the fucking hardcore scene. And like, no, nah, mate, they're metalcore. I was there like, I just, uh, you know what I mean? I was like, you know, you do you, mate. And like, yeah, I, it just, a pointless conversation. I was there like, why, why? What's the point of having this? And I was just like, you know what? I just like, yeah, I'm going to check out early on this. But yeah, anyway. Give really us like the last Lincoln, one. Really like Lincoln Park. Wait, one, it's not the last one, Brad. We've still got two of them to go yeah. for. We're, we're going okay. to make it the last one. Okay, you want to make this a lot? Okay. Okay, yeah. I had a full spiel plan, but you know what? I guess it didn't matter. <laughs> you know? Um, you, you Ty, bro. <laughs> oh, is it Betty Boos? But is. anyway, um, my last one then. Is a a day to remember because we're going kind of into my uh my little sad emo phase, you know. Mm-hmm. I was too still too young to you know like ride the uh the MySpace, you know, um, deathcore sort of vibe. Like mm-hmm. a lot of people, like you know, oh yeah, they, that was those were the days, and like a lot of them aren't far from my generation. From there, like I don't remember that at all. Yeah, I, mean, like, I was there like I, I, I am too young to remember any of that. Yeah. Um, so this was very much I, I kind of was late to definitely late to the party on this. But you know, picture this grumpy Nathan, you know, wants to listen to some grumpy music. He's surprise, tired. Surprise. He's tired of the new metal. He's tired of it. He's not hitting it right. Then all of a s- discovered, all, all of a sudden, Vine comes out. He's like, oh. Finds like a vine of someone using the disrespect to your surrounding songs. He's like, what's, you know, Mr. Highway is thinking about the end. He's like, what the fuck? What, what can I do? What can oh, I all the disrespects my surroundings. Yeah, it's like, that's exactly what I want. So yeah, I, I got into them through that song, Mr. Highway think, thinks about the end. And I think as a band, they've evolved really well. Like I, I still think, you know, even some of the stuff, even though some of the stuff from back back in the days, a bit cringy now, you know, when you look back on it, mm. but it was a different, it, it was a different time. I still think, like, especially Mr. Highway thinks about the end. That fucking song still holds up. Yeah, I, I, you know I mean? it does. That breakdown is still hard as fuck. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, you know, still hard as fuck, right? And I think as a band now, they've evolved into a really interesting band. Like that new track they released, fucking hard do you know what I mean like it is really good absolutely yeah not really like to the miracle it's a great song I mean a day to remember for me it wasn't always present in my life and um, same with like you know any sort of pop punk or emo sounding music you know it wasn't really anything that I listened to until like you know about two years ago so yeah I've always I've always heard them again they played in clubs you know there was always that song and there was always um fucking downfall of us all playing um, which I didn't mind. I'd sort of dance to it, but you know, I wasn't really into that kind of stuff. It wasn't that I was that elitist at that time. I just like I just listened to that stuff and didn't really like it. it. Didn't do anything for me. And then two years ago, I think I was going through like not an identity crisis, but I was like, you know, wanting to find some new shit. Um, I did nothing that. At the I time, did that, yeah. yeah, nothing at the time was really hitting for me. Um, I was I was just recycling the same shit over and over again. Um, so I thought, why don't I give these bands a chance that I wouldn't fucking shut on or just like didn't like for no reason? Um, and then I just gave like, you know, more metalcore bands a chance. I gave like, you know, some pop punk a chance. Um, and I actually really enjoyed it. You know, I thought this is like, you know, it's catchy. It's sort of like the 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 middle ground between being heavy and then being, you know, sort of poppy. Um, something that I can listen to, sing along to. And, you know, going through like, you know, the curved phase, the first fucking dark year, you know, you wanted something a bit more uplifting, even though probably some of the lyrics are going to be quite depressing, but it sounded happy. It's like, I want to kill myself, uh, but then it's like sounding quite positive about it. <laughs> probably not that exact lyric, but I was like, yeah, this is this is sort of like giving me some good vibes, you know, in a time where it was quite dark. So I think right now I'm sort of like much more open about music than I've, I've ever been really. And I think it's, I've found a lot of good bands because of it. And I'm not just like putting them off because they're big. I'm not putting them off because they, they sound a certain way that I'm not used to, you know, at the end of the day, whether you're fucking singing the highest note or, or screaming the dirtiest note, you know, the down below. It's like, well, it doesn't really matter in the end because it's all music. 
So, yeah. and they're a great band. Can't be denied. Yeah. I, you know, the thing is, I really, I still really like him. You know, it's like I didn't really go through an emo phase, but like I feel like I was on the edge of it, and like you know, the day to remember was it was my edge. You know, yeah. it's like I told you that story about when I was in high school. I had a girlfriend that was I had, had an argument with me, probably over something stupid. Now, when you think about it, but I was like, "Moot, Grumpy Nathan came out," and Grumpy Nathan was walking home, being like, "Yeah, disrespect your surroundings." Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, on the bus when it's raining on the window, you just got your head against it. Yeah, and you know, you sat there thinking, my life's so hard. But then when you look back on it, going, that was easy as yeah. fuck. And you're <laughs> looking at your bills and like, fuck. <laughs> okay, yeah. it, gets, it gets worse, don't worry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's been our little nostalgia trip. Um, please let us know um, what was like in a band for you that you know you got into, that you still listen to now, or perhaps something that doesn't hold up and why. Um, be very interested to hear your opinions on that um, don't forget to like and subscribe as well if you want to see more if you liked what we did here as well um, you know we always want to try some new shit every so often so if you like this sort of content then let us know and we might be able to do more of this um, yeah any closing thoughts Neff? Uh, no I enjoyed my little nostalgia trip I was doing it yeah, today at work so. whilst I was working and I was there like oh yeah mate this used to be a banger back in the day and then there was some stuff where I was there like I don't yeah, you know I mean, where it's like, yeah. ah, but yeah, I mean, overall, you know, you was like, don't be too negative, and I wasn't. Yeah. Only, only one band. Did well. I was like, I'm really no. proud of you. I'm really yeah. proud of you. I was very impartial. Very impartial. You know, I feel like I've grown as a person. <laughs> but yeah, yeah no, I, you know, I enjoyed the nostalgia been trip. character development. Yeah, I like what Brad said though. If you enjoy the content that we we have on this channel, um, on this podcast, you know like and subscribe on youtube and please leave us a rating on spotify because it does help us well on any like uh, streaming platform because it does actually help us um gets us get you know be pushed a little bit more and if you want to you know keep up to date with everything headbangers you can find us on everything with headbangers except for twitter for some reason headbangers except for pornhub (laughs) so yeah except for (laughs) pornhub but except for twitter for some reason on Twitter, there was already a Headbangers podcast on there, so it's yeah. Headbangers Pod One. So yeah, yeah, it, give us a follow as well if you like what we do. Exactly, and uh, we'll see you next week. Take care. See you next week.